Perhaps you're aware that many Nazis fled to South America after World War II was over and a great deal of them ended up in Argentina. Now some ended up in Paraguay. What were they doing here? Did it have something to do with the role of Paraguay during the Second World War? In this video we're going to talk about Paraguay during World War II. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location for you. If you find it interesting, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, leave a comment, leave a like. Did you know that when World War II broke out, many Paraguayans were actually pro-Axis? Why was that? And how did the country hover over to the Allied side? Now, to discuss that, we need to discuss some background. Paraguay did not take part in the First World War. It did witness the devastations of war before and after the Great War. In the second half of the 19th century, a devastating conflict took place. It was known as the War of the Triple Alliance, also known as the Paraguayan War, which took place from 1864 till 1870. Here, Paraguay found itself in a conflict with Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. It left the country devastated and much of its population dead due to violence, hunger, and disease. President Francisco Solana Lopez was killed and so was most of the male population. Around two thirds of Paraguay's population perished during the conflict, including 90% of its men. The population was reduced from 525,000 to 221,000 with only 28,000 men left alive. Large parts of the country were annexed by Brazil and Argentina and the country was under occupation for years to come. The conflict left a strong mark on Paraguayan collective consciousness. Another devastating war took place from 1932 to 1935 and here Paraguay fought against Bolivia. This conflict is known as the Chaco War or the Grand Chaco War, where incidents had already been occurring in the late 1920s, but it escalated in a full-blown war in 1932 over the Chaco Barreal, a wilderness region of about 100,000 square miles. Despite Bolivia having a bigger population and thus manpower, a big supply of weapons, and a German general named Hans von Kunt that trained the Bolivian army, the Paraguayans managed to halt them. The war became a stalemate, a truce was signed in 1935 and eventually Paraguay gained most of the territory. Despite all that, 100,000 men were left dead on the battlefield. In 1936, a coup d'etat occurred in Paraguay and it was known as the February Revolution, the February Revolution of Paraguay. Led by military officer Rafael Franco, it overthrew the government of the Liberal Party. Soldiers, veterans and students who participated in the revolt felt that the victory of the Chaco War was despite the government of the Liberals. Colonel Rafael Franco came to power. The new government replaced liberalism with military nationalism. The remains of former President Lopez, who fought and died in the War of the Triple Alliance, were found and buried in the National Pantheon of Heroes in Asuncion. Lopez was severely criticized by the liberals, but under Franco he was given a hero status. The new government carried out land reforms, recognized workers' rights, and started the official use of the native Guarani language. And today there are two official languages in Paraguay, Spanish and Guarani. In the meanwhile, the Chaco Peace Conference was going on. See, the war had de facto ended with a truce in 1935, but a peace had not yet been signed. Now, Franco was willing to give a portion of the Chaco region to Bolivia. And this caused major dissatisfaction among Paraguayan army officers. In 1937, Franco was overthrown and under liberal Felix Paiva, the Chaco War was officially ended. General Jose Felix Estegaribia, who had served in that war, became the new president in 1939. His rule was brief as he died in a plane crash the following year. Eugenio Moringo succeeded him. Moringo would be president till 1948 and therefore the president of Paraguay during World War II. In the mid-1930s, Germany had its eye on South America as a market of its industrial goods and raw materials for its own expansionism. Over a million and a half German colonists and their descendants lived in Latin America by the mid-1930s. Other than many Italians, the Germans did not assimilate and maintained their identity via schools, newspapers, broadcasts and expatriate organizations. They were not resented though, they gained respect due to their hard work and their discipline. They made agricultural and financial projects a success. 
and they kept in touch with the homeland. Many of these immigrants, together with diplomats and spies, participated in activities for the Third Reich. The Nazi operation plan for large-scale espionage in Latin America was named Operation Bolivar. And as you can see on this map, there was major espionage in Paraguay. And this all gravely concerned the United States because they feared that the Germans might cultivate pro-fascist, pro-Nazi sentiments in South America. And eventually that South America would turn against Washington. And that should be avoided. It was evident to Washington that the region's armed forces, a traditional bastion of political power and nationalist sentiment, harbored an ideological sympathy and admiration for Germany, its Wehrmacht and Luftwaffe, and its success in having taken over much of Europe. The US had its eye on Paraguay ever since the Chaco War, and it gravely concerned the US that the Germans had a far larger presence in Paraguay than the US did. Out of a million Paraguayans, 26,000 were German. German immigrants had arrived first in the late 19th century and a second wave came after the First World War. They settled in colonies between Villa Rica and Encarnacion. There were German colonies, one named Hohenau. Some 5,000 lived in the capital of Asuncion. With their discipline and their economic and technical skills, they gained the admiration of many Paraguayan intellectuals, political and military leaders. Now even before Hitler gained power in Germany, he sent Nazi agents to Paraguay to influence the Germans there. A US report read, Nazis took control of the governing board of German schools, removing teachers and principals not sympathetic to National Socialism. In 1931, the first Latin American Nazi party was founded in Paraguay, and later Nazi symbols were seen on both German and Paraguayan establishments. One German Paraguayan recalled, We marched to the Gustav, we sang the party songs, we used the swastika as a symbol, we were a proud German colony. Many government leaders of Paraguay actively supported the Nazis. I read there was one police chief who named his son Adolfo Hiroito in honor of the two Axis leaders. For many Paraguayan officers, fascism's emphasis on nationalism, state power, and national unity was viewed as the country's best and only alternative to the corruption, instability, and fragmentation of liberal rule. So anti-liberal and anti-US sentiments were prevalent in the country when World War II broke out. But when World War II broke out, the economic ties between Paraguay and Germany were severed. Now the US did its best to win over Paraguay. And how did they do that? The US Office of the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs focused on promoting mutual success and understanding in the Americas through a multifaceted program of illogical, cultural, and financial persuasion, meeting Nazi propaganda with American propaganda. Bilateral ties were enhanced already in 1938, and by June 1939, an economic agreement between the US and Paraguay was signed. The North Americans viewed General Estigaribia as someone with pro-US sympathies, and despite him having admiration for fascism, he was seen as a reliable person that could counter Nazi influence in his country. Estegaribia assured the US that he would not tolerate any further Nazi influence in his country. He rejected multiple German economic proposals. His motives were purely economic, because on multiple occasions he managed to extract more economic aid from the US. And when Estegaribia became the de facto dictator of Paraguay, the US tolerated this as long as he kept the Nazis out of his country. Now after his death, Iguinio Moringo took power. He had pro-fascist sympathies as well. Now he turned to a small group of Catholic conservatives within his country who favored the establishment of a paternalistic social Catholic dictatorship, which like the regimes of Salazar and Franco in Portugal and Spain respectively. And the US was somewhat alarmed with the fact that Mourinho was not willing to fulfill his predecessor's promise to curb German activities in Paraguay. The Roosevelt administration enhanced the economic cooperation between the US and Paraguay. 
and the aid they gave to Paraguay was vital for the survival of the regime of Boningo. In September 1941, an agreement was signed in which the US provided $11 million in land lease military equipment to Paraguay. According to a US liaison officer, this was by far the most generous of our land lease offers to other American republics. After a Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, a debate took place within the walls of the government of Paraguay. See, many government and military officials were pro-Axis, but Japanese was busy in Asia, the Germans were busy in Europe, so that left Paraguay pretty much isolated. And because the Allies were also dominating the high seas, Paraguay had no other option than to strengthen its relationship with the United States. Years later, Mourinho said the following. Although Paraguay had great sympathy for the German regime, particularly the army, I decided to align Paraguay with the United States because of the potential benefits or advantages. I reached the conclusion that it was in Paraguay's interest that it be on the side of the Allies. The US took several key symbolic measures, for example, treating the president's son in the United States. He suffered from paralysis. January 1942. The Rio conference took place in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where the foreign ministers of the different American countries came together. Here, Paraguay granted the request to sever relations with the Axis powers, which the country did on the 25th of February. Despite the developments in Europe and Asia still being in favor of the Axis. By the end of 1943, the relations between the US and Paraguay were stronger than ever, and the influence of pro-Axis factions diminished. The late 1942 Allied invasion of North Africa revealed the Axis weak points. In April 1943, President Mourinho closed Vichy's France military mission in Asuncion. He also visited the US and met President Roosevelt in person. Late 1943, the Axis were clearly losing the war, and this also weakened their influence on Paraguay. In October that year, an agreement regarding aviation was signed and in December one concerning a US Army mission in the country. US economic assistance continued and a new international airport was built and opened for business in Paraguay in September 1944. It was also in that year that the Paraguayan government cracked down on German activities in the country. Up until then it had refused to close down the German network that used Paraguay as a base for espionage operations in the region and refused the US request for the deportation of German Nazi sympathizers to the US. After the D-Day landings, serious efforts were made in Paraguay to put restrictions on German political and propagandistic activities and businesses in the country. The US put more and more pressure on Paraguay to eliminate all vestiges of Nazism and also to democratize the country. And if Paraguay would not comply, the US would withhold economic and political assistance. Mourinho started to deport leading Nazis from his country and he took over and denazified German schools. Unwilling to lose US aid and a seat for Paraguay at the United Nations founding, Paraguay declared war on the Axis powers in February 1945. It did not commit troops to the war effort. Now what is very interesting is to take a look at what happened in Paraguay after World War II. Because some important Nazis fled to Paraguay. The two most important were Eduard Rashman and Josef Mengele. Rashman was known as the Butcher of Riga and he died in Asuncion in 1977. But this is interesting because according to files of the Paraguayan police made public, it seemed that leading Nazi Martin Bormann had made its way to Paraguay. In the report was stated that Josef Mengele traveled to Paraguay to cure Bormann of his stomach cancer, to no avail, as the former leading Nazi passed away in 1959. Now other investigations proved that Bormann died in Berlin 1945. The former Auschwitz doctor, nicknamed the Angel of Death, Josef Mengele became a naturalized citizen of Paraguay and resided in Hohenau. He later moved to Brazil where he died in 1979. Now about Bormann, did you know that Mark Felton, I'm sure you are aware of him, 
made an interesting video on just that. You can find it right here. And if you want to learn about Chile during World War II, yeah, what happened to Chile? Hmm, wonder. Well, click right here. Thank you so much for watching and adios from Asuncion, Paraguay.